Hey guys, Dylan from Noble Records coming at you with another video. Every single year I do a top 10 most valuable records in my collection video because it's always changing as I get deeper into collecting. I'm always finding more stuff. Uh, and so every year it's always changing. I always do a top 10. This year I was looking through the top 10 and I was like, man, you know, on up to number 20 is pretty good, you know. And then I was looking, I was like, maybe I should do 25 and... And maybe I should do 50, and I was like, screw it, let's do 100. Let's do the top 100 most valuable records in my collection. So uh, we're going to show you that now. Before we get started, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. That would help me out a lot. Hit the like button. Leave me a comment. What's your favorite record that you've seen in this video? Whatever you want to leave me a comment about. Love hearing from you guys and staying in touch. Also, I have a record store in Matthews, North Carolina, where we buy uh, big collections, give recommendations, things like that. So follow us on Instagram, at Noble Records. Uh, that would be great and we keep up with y'all another disclaimer you know a lot a lot of these videos people make like the top most valuable records in their collection they, they talk about the median discogs value or whatever and I thought about it and, and I really don't want to go through just for time's sake I don't want to go through and tell you the value of each one the median value of each one first of all just because uh, the values are always changing um, second of all, because that's not really what this is all about. You know, it's not really about the money of it. It's just about seeing some really cool rare records in my collection. So, um, if you want to look them up, you absolutely can. No problem there. But, but for me, uh, I, I didn't put those in. Secondly, uh, I omitted box sets and a lot of like, there's a lot of records in my collections that are audiophile records like the Led Zeppelin Classic Series. They were all in the top 100 because they're so expensive now. I omitted those because they're boring. So I wanted to give you some, some fresh stuff to look at that you did not maybe not, haven't heard before. So and the way I determined this is I went through Discogs, I filtered it by most valuable, and then went to you know, and, and counted all the way down. So that's how I came up with this list based on the Discogs median value. So let's get right into it. Uh, number 100 is the 13th floor elevators, Easter Everywhere, 1967 original press. And this one is autographed by Rocky Erickson. Kind of surprised this was so far down on list but um, you know as y'all know if you see my channel this is one of my favorite bands and just an incredible record number 99 is Os Mutantes original press from 1968 um, this is some a Brazilian uh, psych rock that is just out of this world it's one of the early ones that drew my attention and got me into the genre so number 98 is Allison Chains uh, self-titled 1995 some people call it three-legged dog but in my pursuit of grunge originals this one was really really hard to get this is an original 95 US pressing it's in incredible condition number 97 can't believe this is so far down on the list this is Randy Holden population 2 um, this came out in 1970 I have a long long history with this record and honestly this is a case where our discog medians are wrong because this this one has gone for a lot more than the median says uh, in the past it just keeps going up and up and up and up so a very hard record to get a search many years for this record but um, it is truly one of my favorites number 96 is pentagram this is a uh, really good hard rock uh, record from 1985 uh, it's an incredible story about this band don't have time to go into it but there's a, a um, of a documentary on this band called Last Days Here um, and it's absolutely incredible but this is one of the just unheard bands that just were absolutely phenomenal hard rock and then they kind of morphed into a metal and they have their own cult following number 95 is Morgan uh, 1969 uh, this is an incredible record one, one of just my absolute grails I finally got a really nice upgrade copy of this, just added this to the collection recently, but uh, this one is phenomenal. Highly recommended if you haven't heard it, Morgan. Really good hard rock with some great guitar in it. Uh, number 94 is July uh, 1968. Uh, this is an original US pressing. I love this record so much. Um, this would, If I was gonna make a top 10 psych albums, this would be probably in the top three. Just absolutely amazing record. Number 93 is Linda Prax, Parallelograms, uh, 1970. Really good uh, female singer-songwriter, uh, you know, in the same vein as, you know, Joni Mitchell and and uh, Karen Dalton, and, and it's kind of a hybrid. This is a little bit more fringe than uh, Joni Mitchell, but really, really great record. I love this one very much. Some people call it acid folk, but it is um, just beautiful female singer-songwriter stuff. 
Uh, number 92, 1970, St. Anthony's Fire. This is a hard and heavy, in-your-face, rock and roll, acid drip guitar solos. You cannot beat this record. It's fantastic. It took me years and years and years to find this. Absolute grail. I thought this would be higher on the list as well. Um, these I've seen going for a lot here lately, so super thrilled to have this really nice original copy on zonk records number 91 is keith malef you threw fire to heaven this is um a zamrock record and if you're not familiar with zamrock i'll be mentioning that quite a bit through this video because a lot of, of my most valuable records are zamrock but it's rock from zambia really good a lot of it's like psychedelic some of it has kind of a funky vibe to it but it's one of my absolute favorite genres one of the things with zamrock is a lot of the records in my collection I actually omitted a lot off this list because they weren't really in super great shape. So, uh, you know, it's hard to find in good shape, but I didn't want to put trash copies in my top 100 most valuable because they're not the most valuable if they're in bad shape. So um, this one is a really clean, nice, original copy. You know, it, it's clean as they get for Sam Rock. So, uh, but this is a really cool record. It has a lot of, it reminds me of George Harrison for some reason. It just kind of has that vibe, but it has an African feel to it. Hopefully that description will hook you. But number 90 is The Human Instinct Stone Guitar, 1970. Uh, this is from New Zealand. It is just out there in your face. Uh, fuzz guitar for days, mind-blowing stuff. Number 89 is Prime Evil, Smoking Bats at Camptons, 1974. Uh, this one is just a hard, heavy, in-your-face hard rock record. Tough to find. Just look at the cover. If that doesn't do it for you, check your pulse. Uh, number 88 is Gracious. Uh, it's another one. A lot of these are just really good hard rock. This is a great hard rock record. The original UK press on Vertigo. Uh, there's a US pressing of this with a different cover. This is a phenomenal record. A psychedelic hard rock at its best. 87 Greer Between Two Worlds, 1973. Uh, this is some North Carolina local uh, hard Rock Heat on Sugarbush Records. This is one we all look for here in North Carolina. Uh, really good stuff. Uh, Greer was, was a guy named Michael Greer made this record. He was also in a band called Arrogance that was in the area. Really good stuff. 86 Brief Encounter. We came to play. 1981. There's another Brief Encounter record on this list. This is another one from North Carolina. Uh, really good private press funk. Uh, incredible stuff. This next one, number 85, is Gary Higgins' Red Hash from 1973. Uh, this is an incredible record. Uh, acid folk type stuff. Number 84, probably the most controversial record in my collection, but it's so weird I had to have it. This is number uh, number 84, Charles Manson, Lie, The Love, and Terror Cult. 1970 this is an original press on awareness records uh, they they redid this on esp disc um, in 74 this is the original which is just uh impossible to find so many copies uh, if they did get out they were destroyed there's a long story behind this record if you don't know charles manson was a um obviously a murderer but also a really good uh singer songwriter he wrote one of the beach boy songs really interesting Number 83, 1971, Toad, self-titled. Um, from the very earliest of me collecting, I looked for this record, took me years to find. This is an original Italian press, really, really super clean, near mint copy. Can't believe it's number 83, and it's not any higher than that, but that's where we are. Uh, beautiful record. Uh, number 82, I forgot, I accidentally left this one in there, but I'll show it anyways. This is the SRX pressing of Herbie Hancock, Maiden Voyage. Um, this is a great record. I'd love to have an original. Hopefully, I'll, I'll show an original next year in my video. But uh, this is just a phenomenal jazz record. And SRX uh, is like some of the quietest vinyl. Really, really good uh, music matters audio file pressing of this. Uh, number 81 is Howlin' Wolf, Moanin' in the Moonlight, 1959 original pressing on Chess Records. Uh, Howlin' Wolf just has some really valuable records that are really hard to find, so if you collect blues like I do, uh, they're high up on your want list. And so I found this a couple years ago. This is a really nice copy, first pressing, beautiful stuff. Number 80 is Malawi. Uh, it's 1974 on Strata Records. Um, Strata Records was kind of a sister label to Strata East. This is uh, some jazz 
free jazz, jazz funk out of Detroit. Uh, but this is a phenomenal record. Found this in a collection this year, um, and just it was actually still sealed. And I, I had a, the the dilemma of whether well, I should open it and listen to it or not. Obviously, I did. Uh, this one is number seventy nine. Formula One Hold On, nineteen seventy seven on Guinness Records. I found this at Salvation Army for forty nine cents. Uh, yeah, one of my best thrift store pulls of all time. Really good boogie funk from 1977. Private Press is actually a tax. Uh, it was a tax fraud label. Uh, it's kind of a really interesting story. Number 78 is Gaston, my queen. It's number 78 from 1978. This is uh, North Carolina funk. Uh, one of the North Carolina funk records we look for when we dig out here. But really incredible funk stuff. Number 77, The Fallen Angels. It's a long way down. This is an original press. Uh, 1968. This is a really rare psych record. Um, tough to get thanks to a buddy of mine in Austin, Texas from BLK Records. Hooked me up with this. Number 76 is Magnum Fully Loaded from 1974. Tremendous, tremendous funk record. I'll look this up if you love funk. Magnum Fully Loaded. Number 75 is Gandalf from 1969. Uh, this is on Capitol Records, but it's an extremely rare uh, psych record. Really good fuzz guitar on it, but also really melodic. Uh, just a perfect psych record, in my opinion. Number 74 is Nick Drake, Brighter Later. This is an original 71 Press. Uh, UK 71 Press on the Island label. Uh, amazing record. Nick Drake, uh, really good acoustic folk. Uh, stuff kind of a downer I guess you call it downer uh, folk uh, amazing songwriter number 73 is Pooba let me in uh, this is from 1972 Ohio hard rock uh, rare just killer stuff great guitar primal screaming vocals just incredible stuff Pooba let me in number 72 is wedge self-titled um, this is you printed really basic like this hard rock band from Maryland I've got another one of their records coming up but really really good stuff um, amazing guitar record uh, number 71 is Weldon Irvine liberated brothers a private press uh, jazz funk record uh, 1972 really killer record Weldon Irvine liberated brother 70 is Malagasy at Newport uh, this is a 1973 uh, kind of a jazz jazz funk record French uh, really tough to get if you like French jazz funk library stuff this is it man it's real it's in that vein phenomenal stuff number 69 surprise keep on trucking that's from 1972 hard rock private press uh, really good stuff this is the first pressing with the black and white cover there's a second pressing with like a red and uh yellow cover but they're rl crumb inspired figures not actually by rl crumb but um, they're kind of famous for that 68 is david bowie's self-titled 1967 um this is one that's just really hard to get if you like david bowie you might not even like this this just sounds a little bit different but uh his first record this is an original u.s press the uk's actually go for a lot more number 67 is 1975 musio tunio wings of africa this is another uh zamrock record uh this is one of the absolute best zamrock records this is a staple but it's a really nice copy actually it's got some ring wear but it was a totally white cover so that's to be expected uh, but yeah, phenomenal stuff. Really good blend of Afrobeat, funk, and psychedelic rock. 66, this is McChurch Soundroom Dilution from 1971. It's on that Pills label. This is an original press. Uh, this is some, some kraut rock. Incredible record. This one is so, so hard to find. Thrilled to have this in my collection. Took me forever to find. This one's always tough for me to pronounce. This one is the m 2 May. Umoja Ensemble, Alkebulon, Land of the Blacks, 1972. This is on Strata East Records. This is a really help, tough one to find. Usually when you do find them, they have really bad ring wear. This one doesn't have much ring wear, and it's a really nice copy. This is uh, like soul jazz, jazz funk type stuff. Really great record. 64 is War Pig. This is a 1972 Canadian hard rock. Really hard record to find in the original state. This is the original pressing original Canadian pressing uh, very very rare very sought after by hard rock collectors but uh, call this band usually the uh, Canadian Black Sabbath that's what it sounds like really good stuff 63 is felt on Nasco records from 1972 really cool record this was actually a gift to me but um, 
yeah, a friend of mine uh, got an upgrade copy and just gave me this one. I was shocked. One of the most generous gifts I've ever been given. Uh, really killer record. Look at that cover. That should that should tell you what you need to know. Number 62 is Witch Lazy Bones 1975. Um, I actually think this is one of one of the top three most valuable records that I have, in my opinion, because of the condition. Uh, 90, 95% of the time, the ones that sell are trashed. The record's trash, the cover's trashed. This is just one that didn't survive in clean condition like this. This one is a really clean copy. Cleanest one I've ever seen or heard of. Um, and so this one I think is probably in the top three most valuable records I have. But anyways, this is uh, Zamrock. It's bet as good as it gets. If you want to just cut your teeth on Zamrock, which Lazy Bones is where you should start. Beautiful record from front to back. Number 61, just got this record. This is uh, Christopher, uh, 1970. Uh, this is some Texas Psych for you. This is a white label promo. Uh, really, really killer Texas Psych record. Um, that look for that one for a long time, just added to the collection. Uh, number 60 is Sam Gopal, Escalated from 1969. This is an original UK press, and it's got Lemmy in it for Motorhead. That's kind of its claim to fame, but this is a really, really good hard rock record from, uh, from 1969. Uh, number 59 is Odin. Uh, from 1972, you guys have seen the Avengers. This is Thor's daddy. Um, this is original UK Vertigo pressing. Uh, just a fantastic record. I love this one so much. Number 58, this is Dr. Footswitch Liquid Iron, 1975. Uh, this is an early Zamrock record. I know the cover is a little bit tattered, but uh, the disc is really, really clean on this. And this was just, this one is so incredibly rare. Um, I don't know. I don't think I know anybody else who has ever found one, um, but yeah, this is a you know obviously this stuff's only made in Zambia, so it's it's super hard to get, but incredible early essential Zamrock stuff. Number 57, 1962. This is Bob Dylan's self-titled record, uh, but this is not just any ordinary copy. This is a promo copy of his first record. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but it says it's a it's a six eye, but it also has the text that says like demonstration copy number 56 is samuel prody uh, 1971 this is the original german pressing very hard to get but yeah this is another one just really good seminal um hard rock if you haven't heard of this band samuel prody i don't hear him talked about too much but this is a really rare record 55 is sunburst this is a really good band uh, all their members for were from different parts of africa but uh this record got you know, pressed and released in in Zambia, but it's uh, Afrobeat funk with some fuzz guitar, really good. Uh, Sunbur Sunburst Avenue Africa or Av Africa, uh, really killer one. This one's in pretty good shape. Power Plant, The Golden Dawn. This one is number fifty four from nineteen sixty eight. Beautiful cover. This is a really nice copy. that's still in the shrink. I got this one last year um, on International Artists, same label as the Thirteenth Floor Elevators. Uh, they actually kind of ran alongside 13th Floor Elevators and um, a lot early in the history of both bands, a lot of them played in each other's bands. Uh, so this is in, kind of in that same vein. I broke my own rule for number 53. This is a box set and an audio file. Uh, this is uh, Allison Krauss and Union Station Live. Uh, the reason that I chose this one to be in here is because uh, it is an album. It's not a box set with like a bunch of extras or anything like that. This is just the album, but it was released... Um, from MoFi originally and they haven't done another vinyl reissue of it, which I wish they would because this is so sought after everybody wants it but just incredible um, you know bluegrass uh, number 52 is uh, Romingo Ducros Tempo de Naja 1970 Italy this is a really rare uh, library record I need to do a video soon on library records just kind of explain because I always talk about it but um, but yeah look library music is really cool I know it sounds lame but this is like real funky it's music that they used in commercials and movies and stuff like that but if you get the records uh from the different artists that compose these this that soundtrack some of them are lame some of them are absolutely killer this is a really good uh kind of funky library record number 51 guns and roses live era uh this is 1999 original 1999 press what is this four lp it's not a box set. It's like number 50 is Kavash Jute Wide Open, 1971, Australian Pressing. Uh, just fantastic hard rock record. I, I showed this in my 
uh, 20 Obscure Records That'll Blow Your Mind video, and a lot of people really loved it. Number 49 is a Lafayette Afro rock band. Uh, this is Malik. Look for this record for just the longest time. This is an original uh, French pressing on America Records. But yeah, this one is incredible funk rock. Uh, it's, it's an American band that was transplanted over to France and just really good stuff. They have a few records that are really good. Um, number 48 is Darius 1969. Uh, this is on Chartmaker Records. Really cool. Um, but this is, sounds a lot like The Doors to me. A really cool record, Darius, if you haven't heard. Number 47 is Sonny Rollins, Saxophone Colossus. This is an original pressing. Uh, 1957, Prestige. Uh, really nice condition. I've got a long history with this record. I've had it a couple times, but I found this one this year in a collection. Uh, just one of my absolute favorite jazz records of all time. 46, Euphoria Lost in Trance, 1973. Really cool hard rock record. Um, great guitar work on here. Don't let that cover fool you. It is hard and heavy. Uh, number 45. Whoo boy. Bill Evans, Waltz for Debbie, original stereo pressing. This one's still in the shrink. Found this one in the same collection I got the Saxophone Colossus in. Uh, but this is just one of those records that have just shot up in value over the past few years. But within good reason, absolutely phenomenal record, Waltz for Debbie. Number 44, Pearl Jam, Lost Dogs, 2003. Uh, you guys know all about this record. Really tough to find, original uh, Pearl Jam record. Uh, number 43 is Mighty Baby, Jug of Love. Mighty Baby, really good uh, prog band. They kind of went Eastern and did uh, something with a little bit different vibe. Number 42 is Del Jones, Positive Vibes. Absolutely amazing uh, soul jazz, jazz funk uh, record. You got to have this one in your collection. It's killer. Number 41, Night Sun, Morning. The original pressing on Zebra Records, super scarce, really hard to find, really, really hard rock record, phenomenal stuff. If you haven't heard it, uh, it's very, very heavy for its time. Number 40, The Oscillations, I Can See It Coming. Uh, this is from 1978, Zambia. This is another Zamrock record. This is personally maybe my favorite Zamrock record because the guitar work on this is so good, but just look at that cover. Also phenomenal stuff. Number 39 is Placebo. Uh, self-titled 1974 this is an original French pressing really hard to find uh, this is some jazz funk amazing record number 38 is the Stooges um, this is an original UK pressing which is really really rare uh, you know you hear a lot in punk rock documentaries and stuff like we didn't have the Stooges over here they didn't we didn't have Stooges records over here they, they weren't even pressed over here but they actually were and they're but they're really 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 freaking rare and so uh this is a rare first uk pressing of the stooges self-titled next one's number 37 sonny rollin nukes time this is an original pressing uh 1959 blue note deep groove all the all the stuff but uh f fantastic sonny rollins original blue note record we're getting into some heavy stuff now i guess number 36 uh, this one is Earthen Vessel, Hard Rock slash Everlasting Life. This is 1971. This is a psychedelic hard rock Christian band that would tour around on a bus and blow people's minds at revivals and stuff. But really good psychedelic hard rock. Number 35 is Ricky Ilalonga, Zambia. Uh, Ricky Ilalonga is a fantastic guitar player from Zambia. He was in the band Museo Tunia that I showed you earlier. Just he's a virtuoso. He can play any style, and he really showcases it on this record. Um, this one is a really clean copy. These are really hard to find clean. Uh, it's another Zamrock one for number 34. This is the Broadway Quintet. Um, Emma Loom. This is a 1976 Zambia uh, Zamrock record on Zambezi label. Uh, I love this one for the... It's a great record, but I love the artwork on here. As you can see, they stole the uh, King Crimson uh, artwork but yeah really really cool record uh, number 33 is the human beast volume one uh this is an original german press 1970 really hard to get this one is a real heavy hard rock grail uh, this is some heavy stuff number 32 is smoking willie 1973 uh, really good private press um a lot of really cool hard rock covers on this number 31 is the ngozi family 
45,000 volts volume two. Uh, 45,000 volts is a really iconic uh, Zamrock record, but they actually did a volume two of it that is really rare and hard to find. It's where um, basically Paul Ngozi, he wanted to get out of his contract from what he was doing with uh, the Chris Editions, and so he went on his own label and re-recorded this record exactly the same uh, songs, but with like heavier guitar later. So uh, really cool. Just a, it's just an obscure thing if you're into Zamrock. Number 30 is another Zamrocker. This is a uh, this is one of the most sought after rare Zamrock records. This is Chrissy Zebby Timbo and the Ngozi family, my ancestors. This is 1976. Um, so you've got the Ngozi family, but Chrissy Zebby, Tim, Zebby Timbo was a uh, drummer. He was a family friend of Paul Ngozi since he was a kid, um, and he released his own record. This is an absolutely top drawer fantastic record number 29 is the misfits walk among us original press i uh, just found this maybe a month ago really killer stuff i do collect misfits this is uh the original misfit stuff is really hard to find but i do have a few number 28 is wedge uh, no one left but me 1974 um i mentioned them a little while ago they had a self-title but this one is also a really really killer hard rock record number 27 is trevor dandy don't cry little tree 1970 canada um is there any love in this world is the is the track on here uh it's been sampled a lot but really killer funk record from canada number 26 is herbie hancock inventions and dimensions 1964 original blue note i actually found this one in the same collection as those other jazz records i was talking about earlier amazing stuff herbie hancock is one of my absolute favorite musicians who's ever lived uh this is a really tough one to get number 25 we're in the top 25 guys home stretch this is andromeda uh, 1969 uk amazing uh blend of folk rock and hard rock great guitar work impossible to find but there's they've, they've recently done some really good reissues of this record but andromeda number 24 is the tinkles muchacho uh this is it might sound like a Latin record, but it's another Zamrock record. This one's really clean, um, but it's it's a tough one to get. But I, I was able to get this really clean copy. Really good. A little bit more on the funky, soulful side of Zamrock. Number 23 is Morley Gray, The Only Truth, 1972. This one is a mega hard rock grail. Um, took me forever to find one, but this is one that I never thought I would get. Number 22 is Pharaoh Sanders Pharaoh. This is um, an original 1977 pressing. Uh, Pharaoh had just broken away from Impulse Records and kind of wanted to start doing his own thing. Um, he actually sings a little bit on this record as well. But this is a really tough record to get, but some of my favorite Pharaoh Sanders work. Amazing record. Number 21 is the Ngozi Family Heavy Metal. This cover, there's something about it that like messes with your eyes. That way that pink pops out. It's amazing. Uh, but really crazy, over-the-top Zamrock guitar noodling. Uh, there's so much guitar soloing going on this record. Number 20, Truth and Janie, No Rest for the Wicked. Uh, 1976 Hard Rock. Amazing stuff, man. This is one I'm, this is this one I always talk about. I know, but it's, uh, it's one if you haven't heard, check out Truth and Janie. Number 19, I just got this record this week. This is Zerfus. Um, amazing record, 1973 uh, from Indiana. Just amazing private press. Well, it's not private press. It's 700 West, which is actually the same label that um, that Prime Evil is on. I talked about that earlier. Uh, but yeah, really cool. It's more on the psychedelic side, but definitely has some, some good guitar work on it too. So, Tamam Shud. Uh, Galushianites and the Real People, 1970. This is a, a original 1970 Australian pressing. If you like kind of prog hard rock, this one is absolutely mind blowing. Um, I talked about Kavash Jute um, in a couple videos. This is a really good companion piece to Kavash Jute. Um, amazing hard rock on the prog side. Oh man, I, I feel like it's wrong that I'm not spending more time talking about each record, but just, the point is just to show them. Um, number 17 is the Plastic Cloud, 1968, Canada. Phenomenal Canadian psychedelic rock. Super rare. Amazing, amazing stuff. I don't talk about this record enough. It's 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 just top tier. Uh, I cannot believe this one's so far down on the list. Number 16, Moving Sidewalks Flash. 
1968. This is Billy Gibbons' uh, band before ZZ Top. Really cool. Um, you know, it's got that southern rock feel to it, but it's really psychedelic as well. Amazing guitar work by Billy Gibbons, obviously. But uh, this is an original pressing on the Tarantula Records. Amazing stuff. Really nice shape on this one. Next one is number 15, Drywater Southpaw, 1974 Hard Rock. This is uh, from right Statesville, I think, North Carolina, but somewhere here in North Carolina. Um, really good stuff. Hard to find a record, even in this area. I've had it a couple times, uh, but this is a just really good guitar-heavy hard rock record. Number 14 is Hake Mobley Roll Call. Um, amazing original pressing, actually. Uh, oh, this one's crazy. I found in that jazz collection, I found a copy of this disc just in a jacket and like a like a plain white sleeve and it was a the disc was in really nice shape and I was like dang it doesn't have a cover um, and a friend of mine shout out to Jason the jazz basement he uh, found somebody that had a cover and we were able to do some wheeling and dealing and I got an original cover with it as well but uh, roll call just an extraordinary jazz record number 13 is Rockadrome Royal American 20th Century Blues 1969 Canada this is a mind-blowing psychedelic record. Love it. Got a lot of Canadian psychedelic and hard rock in this in this episode. But yeah, this is a really, really cool one. Uh, some studio musicians that got together and created a psych band. Great stuff. That's number 13. Number 12, Brief Encounter. Introducing the Brief Encounter 1977. Rumored to only be 100 copies of this in the world. This is a North Carolina funk record as well extremely hard to find i disagree with the evaluation that discogs has just because the medians um you know i think some people have sold reissues on there something has brought the median down but um this is probably another top three most valuable in my collection it's farther a lot farther towards the top but amazing stuff i have some reissues of this in my shop number 11 linda hoyle pieces of me 1971 original uk vertigo this is i've heard people say this is the rarest vertigo there's only 300 copies of this ever made linda hoyle was the lead singer of a group called infinity that was also on uh vertigo records but this is a really cool record kind of meant to showcase all the different types of music she was able to do there's like some jazz vocal stuff all the way to say like really hard rock credible uh stuff so okay let's get to the top 10 Number 10, wouldn't you know it, is The Amazing Farm, 1971. This is one of my most talked about records, talk about all the time. I looked for this record my whole life. Finally found it last year, um, Over the Moon. Shout out to America's Groove Record that, um, that was able to hook me up with it. We did an exclusive of the reissue, just you guys know. Uh, number 9 is The Dog That Bit People, 1971 original UK press. Uh, really good psychedelic rock. Um, they there's a couple really killer tracks on here. Number eight is Irish Coffee, self-titled 1971 Belgium. Just showed this in that 20 obscure rock records. I'll blow your mind video as well. This has recently been reissued and should be fairly easy to get. I would jump on them if I were you. Really really good hard rock from Belgium. Number seven is the only seven inch in the whole rundown and that's the misfits horror business this is an original i'm not going to pull it out but it's an original uh, yellow vinyl uh beautiful really cool copy i uh, found this recently amazing stuff uh, number six is hank mobley soul station original deep groove you know found that in that jazz collection i was telling you about uh so i found like five of these in that collection uh, but this is this was an all-time jazz grail. If I had to pick one jazz record of my whole collection to keep it, would be this one. Uh, just, I mean, I'm telling you, this. I think this is my number one favorite jazz record of all time. It's incredible. But to have an original pressing, and that one is like perfect condition too. All right, number five. Can you guess what it is? I talk about this one all the time too. This one's Fraction Moonblood. I can't believe this is number five because honestly, I think... I think this is number one. If I was going to sell all my records, this is the one that would go for the most. Um, I did look through uh, at Discogs. Some of the sold listings have, like, people have re pit reissues before that there was. So sometimes on Discogs, like, before that there's a reissue listing, 
uh, somebody will just put reissue under the original and, and say, hey, this is a reissue and people still buy it. So there's like $30, $40, $50 sold. And so it's brought the value way, way, way down. But it's still number five. But like I said, I think this is the most valuable record in my collection. This is this was my most wanted record of all time. Like if you'd asked me a year ago, pick one record and this, this would be it. It's The Doors Meet Black Sabbath mind-blowing stuff. Number four is Sandstone. Can you mend a silver thread? 1971, Pennsylvania, acid folk. Some young kids, like teenagers, just made this uh, record. High production value. Uh, really good private press record. Number three is Hickory Wind. Uh, 1969. This is just some um, rural private press psych. Uh, and uh, it's good stuff. I mean, uh, I love this record. Found it, got a really smoking deal on it last year. Uh, but yeah, really rare record. I think there's only 100 of these. It's a great record from, from Indiana. Top two. Number two is Rocktown Express. These are original 1974 Nigerian pressing. This is super rare. And to have one in this shape, usually they don't survive in this shape. Rocktown Express is one of those bands. Uh, it's just a classic Nigerian, uh, funky, uh, Afrobeat type of music but really killer stuff man love this record I actually just got this one a couple months ago so this is one I got this week number one I just got this in the mail I uh, got a really good deal on a uh, really nice guy reached out to me he had it um, and uh, was able to sell it to me this is called Vindication 1973 uh, this is a Christian prog record uh, it's a uh, heavy on the UK prog influence uh, it sounds a lot like Emerson, Lake and Palmer, yes, stuff like that, but just a little bit more out there. Um, but yeah, some cool synthesizers, stuff like that. I have a page on Instagram called Find This Record where I post stuff from my collection. Just posted about this with some sound clips. So really cool record called Vindication. Kind of rare. Um, most people probably never even heard of that record. Uh, but anyways, I also have some honorable mentions that I wanted to mention that I think should have been at the very top of the list, but they're so rare that they don't have any sales history on Discogs. They do have sales history on poptike.com, which is a bunch of like uh, compiled information from past eBay auctions. So uh, this one is Vic Victor Perino Kingdom Come. This is an original press, one of my absolute best finds ever. Um, fantastic, fantastic uh, prog just mind-blowing synthesizer work um oh my gosh this is an amazing record i love it um and then this is another one this is the uh, montgomery express i've talked about this at length a really good instrumental funk record it has no sales history around discogs um, on pop psych uh, these have gone for a couple grand and this is the cleanest one i've ever seen um yeah i think there's only 100 copies of these as well even the reissue goes for over 500 bucks so this is a rare record um, and then this 13th floor elevators, psychedelic sounds. This is an original mono with the hype sticker. Um, and this one came in at like number 108 or 109 or something like that. But I thought I would mention it. It's just one of my favorites. And I just felt like I should have to mention it. So thank you all for sticking around for this entirely too long video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please leave me a comment. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Let me know what you think of this video. And we'll see you next time.